always a thing of, of accounts of Engels. But I would say the benefit of the English, we can put it on YouTube and a lot of people can see the speech. On the other hand, we would like to see the people who are most of the name of Afrikaans. But it is in May. So at the end, you have to be so you good for. If I, if I think about, about our speaker, um, uh, he's got a colorful history, I would say, in terms of where you grew up, where you know, being also a Germany, and from that went to politics, and from that uh, being a director of the Potsdamer University. And from there, of course, the deal from the uh, EVA uh, Stiftung, EVA the Berg Stiftung, and currently decided to retire, but actually not really, because you became so busy with all other things, a lot of directorship, etc. But very important, um, quite recently, he wrote something on, um, on what happened about 40 years ago, when uh, uh, P.W. Boota, can you remember the Rubicon speech? 1985. And with that, well, that's the question. I mean, that was a so-called Rubicon speech, but it was a Rubicon for apartheid, and maybe we never got there. Uh, so now, I think um, what Tienz is saying, now we have another Rubicon, and that Rubicon is a so-called ANC Rubicon. So, what's the next one for you, Tienz? Go on, Ayo. Thank you, Willis. Thank you, Nancyera. Uh, thank you. I will, uh, I will every now and then try to summarize in English. Uh, uh, the presentation is in Afrikaans, but it's a, I, I'll translate it quickly if necessary. Can I first say that this topic was given to me by Niku when I looked at the invitation two days ago? I said, "What the heck is he say asking me to talk?" So I decided to use uh, to keep it, uh, but um. Eigenlijk maar te zeggen wat ik wil zeggen. Zo, ik zou op die einde willen zeggen of onze opa is van vaderland of moederland of voorland. Okay. Um, die, die tweede ding wat ik net wil zeggen is uh, net een klein correctie op, op, op Willy. Um, ik, ik was wel een predikant, maar ik heb toen, uh, zoals demos van die Bijbel, blijkbaar het eens worden geweldig lief gekregen. En zo, uh, so ik is vandaag lekker bezig met de klomp voor niks dankbaar. Om nog bezig te zijn. Ik heb vrienden wat bij ouder lijken als ik wat afgetreden al. So, ik praat basis over die politieke situatie en die aanloop tot die verkiezing en so een of twee scenario's voor die verkiezing. En natuurlijk coalities. Uh, so, the, I, I started saying what are my points of departure for the scenario's that, that I will give you. Um, and and the first one that takes up the whole of this page is that the ANC is inevitably on a downward trend. Uh, the ANC can itself, I don't know if it's all of her, itself, no more rechtrecht. And I have two articles that I've written in my name for them to do. The problem is that the organization is in its kern verrot. En zelfs die goede ouders in die ANC, en dat is goede ouders in die ANC, kan dit niet meer recht krijgen. Dat is te veel kaders, onbe, onbeholpen mensen, onbevoegde mensen en sleutelposten. En, en ook Sarah Ramaphosa kan het niet meer recht krijgen. So that's the first point, that, that the ANC is the biggest factor in the change of, of politics that we're going to see. And it's because they like this going down. Just a question of when they'll, they'll uh, reach rock bottom. And what did it let to be? And actually, one of the most important is the toxic combination of race transformation. I call it the so called 80-992 formula. And you will know 80-992 erken for the census, for now the census, it says. Um, was daar 80% Afrikaans in die land, 9% wit mens en 9% bruin mens en 2% Indiërs. En dit is die formule vir die ANC, hoe elke organisatie in die land moet lyk. 
want jy moet die nationale demografie weerspeel. So ek moet sê, you are a lot of untransformed people tonight here, uh, according to the ANC. Now, that in itself is, is already a bad thing, but then combine that with Kader deployment and corruption, and you have a formula that's devastating, not only for the government or the state, but also for the party. En die van julle waar die ANC sy nationale kongres uh, dopgehoud op televisie so jaar of twee gelede sal weet, dit, hulle kon nie begin nie, hulle het laat begin, hulle kon nie klaarmaak en die tijd toe hulle beleid moet bespreek, dus die kaders op pad terug in die busse. En, en dit gebeur op elke vlak, op elke takvlak. Uh, en, en dis eindelijk iets wat hulle self nou buit, dat die, hulle het ook kaders in hulle organisatie aangestel. So that's the, that's the first thing. And, and this plays out in bad or no organizational, administrative and management capacity. En natuurlijk baie ANC mense sal sê, julle sal het oor televisie hoor, we have a problem with capacity. Now the capacity problem is the one wat daar begin het. Jy sê net a capacity problem, dit is die een wat gemaakt is dier die ANC self. Daar is ook diep verdeeldheid in facties. Uh, ek dink, daar is soveel kloewe in die ANC beleidsmatig, that they can't heal themselves in that either. And then, a lot of self-interest, uh, hebsig, eerder as ideologie. So the ideological differences are not that bad. It's about my interest and your interest, it's not the same. And then, especially in Kwasila Natal, but also in some other provinces, there are criminal syndicates who have taken over NC branches to get money of tenders in local authorities. And that's why most of the people killed in Kwasila Natal are ANC members killed by other ANC members. Because they want to make sure that I get become councillor and not you, because then I'll get the tenders. The good guys in the ANC are few and powerless. Min en machteloos. Um, en moet ek sê, daar is een klompie, en ek gaan hulle weer oor die ANC Rubik, want praat, daar is een klompie van hulle wat begin om die ANC Rubik, en oorgesteek, hulle wil nog net die sel is aan die ander kant, en hulle is, hulle is nog hier een halfpunt, hulle wonder, moet hulle nie maar omdraai nie. So, dit is een pad. But, die punt is, die ANC gaan, en julle kan my maar volg nie, na die verkiesing nooi, en as het verkeerd was, sal ek sê, ek was verkeerd. Die ANC het gaan swakker vaar ons in 2024 as in 2019 met 57% en 2021 met 53%. So, nou so the ANC is the biggest factor of the inevitable political change that we have in the country. Die tweede uitgangspunt is dat die oppositiepartij is nie eenstemmig nie, maar hulle is, sommige van hulle is beter beleind en georganiseerd as ooit in die verlede en die veel partij handvest, die sogenaamde multi-party charter, waar dan nou 7 partij is, die ACDP het onlangs ook besluit hulle gaan inkom, die Afri- African Christian Democratic Party, um, is een belangrike factor in die, in die geval. The EFF is playing its in, in its own sandcastle. Um, I heard yesterday, the day before from a prominent journalist, that they are a little bit concerned that the EFF has woken up to the idea that they must register voters. Up to now, they thought that, you know, holding a big rally with Julius uh, in Johannesburg would be enough. Unfortunately, they've now realized that that won't be enough. I actually, I had hoped that they would just stick with Julius. It's not clear with who they will go in the coalition or not. My stand is always that Julius Malema had the ANC so by he will the ANC vernietig sien and he will in the vacuum in stap. I don't think he will be in the second video as the under president Sam Cyril and Max will return So the EFF is on its own case. Then there are some parliamentary others and they count about 2.5% of representation in parliament. That's the Al-Jamaas, the Goods and the UDMs of the world. Then there are some untested others who are not yet, who have not yet, as Action, Action SA, who is part of the field partner uh, charter, 
but he was not taking part in the national election. This Bosa, which in Oman is built one South Africa. It's Raiz Mzanzi of Zungezo Zibi, a former editor of the Business Day, and then uh, the Patriotic Alliance. You would have seen Gaten McKenzie uh, spewing forth on television every now and then. And so the other outgangspunt that a factor is, is that the a uh, 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 pre-election act, a voor-verkiesingscoalitie van oppositiepartijen sal die oppositie sy gesamentlike steun verhoog. What I mean by that is that if people say, well, I don't really have, I know I must vote against the NC, but this party I've got a problem with, that party I've got a problem with, but if you know they're in a coalition, then you know that your vote for any one of them will count against the NC. That's why I think that's a very good thing that they did before the election, because normally, Anton Obers will tell you, normally you wait until after the election, then you see coalition partners. So this is unprecedented, really. Uh, and I think the fact that uh, Professor William Gemere gefraas as an unafhankelijk voorster, that the name of the is for the moonshot pack, that the DA thing was, and for others that the veel partij answers, is positive. But I think also that Professor Gemere will be able to do this in his island again. Uh, it's not easy. Makkelijk. In a sum, is partijen wat buiten die 30% pool is, kan een groot verandering maak. Nou, wat ek in die 30% pool betref, the supporters of, of most of the parties in the multi-party charter come from the minority, racial minority groups, whites, colors and Indians, and a few, Zuma would call them clever blacks. Um, you know, mostly in Santon, uh, rich, middle class, upper middle class black people, but it's a small percentage of black people. It's mostly whites, coloreds, and Indians, and they are 30%. That's the pool. So if you want to get more, you have to take it away from another party. So if the Freedom Front wants more, well, they may go for some of the colored voters, the brown voters in the Western Cape, but you have to take away from the DA, and the DA has to take away from Action, action S, and so on. But if you can get parties who specifically say, we want to fish outside the 30% pool, we want to target, as on the ZBS said, disgruntled ANC voters, we want to target the 15 million unregistered young voters between 18 and 30, then you're in a different ballgame. And that, I think, is a big factor in the scenarios that I'm giving to you tonight. Because if you can get the 30, but you can get another 15, or even 20, then you're in business. So this, this boss is what the guy just said. Good. Uh, a third outgangspunt is the role of the burgerlijke samenlevings organization, civil society. Um, and if one looks at civil society organizations, they were very active before apartheid, in the, during the apartheid days. Um, but since 1994, those, that activism has declined because there was a legitimate government and the ANC actively discouraged foreign donors to give money to the NGOs. They said, look, we now have a legitimate government, give it to us. Obviously, you know what happened with that. And as the ANC started to fail, these, this activism started to pick up again. And Jelle Weert was an outdoor by other organizations that what activist is as, as NGOs. And Fanon is gestig, um, in the time to, to Zuma a virgreep gehad het op die ANC, um, en wat eindelijk hulle wil in die geest van Ramaphoria, wat hulle eindelijk die, die ANC red en daarom die land red. Um, en, en hulle het basis is sê, we must defend our democracy, as long as a reformed ANC stays in power. Hulle het nie die ANC rubriek on oorgestek gekry. En as baie van hulle nog, maar as ook ander wil het al gedoen het. So the most of these organizations are apolitical. They, not, they don't specifically say we stand for this party or that party, but uh, as I said, some of them come out of the struggle history and they, they are pro ANC. The majority, however, understand and agree that political change is inevitable and necessary. They would just say the ANC must change, and they must become different. 
Others would say, no, we don't want the ANC, we want something else. And, and, and let, let me ask the answer. Why do you say, we're going to do better with the ANC than the opposition? As with the ANC. And my very short answer is, we can't do it so much. I will act. As you know, my answer is, what a party is like to say, look at the bag. We can also give an answer. No? But all of them is better as what we say to them. I know there are other arguments, and there are better arguments than this. But in the final gesprek, I will say to all of them, the stem is better, but we can't be swapped. And for that reason, it's important that disgruntled ANC members should cross the ANC group. And what I mean with that is, one must be able to envisage a future in government without the ANC. Now, you may say this is easy. No, it's not so easy. It's not easy for people, and I take my parents who have voted national party their whole life. They couldn't get themselves to vote for the Democratic Party, even in the 2000s. They just stopped voting. And there are many older ANC people who just can't not vote for the ANC. So the best they can do is to say, okay, I'll stay away. But there are also white people and other minorities who can't envisage a future without the ANC. They, they're stuck. You know, we'll never get rid of them. You know, they are the majority. I think we must also change our mindset and cross that ANC Rubicon and say it is possible. My conclusion, basically, is that we will be rid of the ANC within one to six years. At the latest 2029. And I'll tell you why I say that. But I must envisage it. I can't get stuck in saying, oh, we can't do anything, you know. And I won't vote because I, there's no party I want to vote for. So, for the civil society organizations, we've agreed, and I'll talk a little bit about Convergence essay just now, on, on four, five... Um, projects. Um, the first is voter registration, visa registration. And the focus is in the first place on the 15 million young people who are between 18 and 30 years old who are not yet registered. And, and this is for all for white kiezers, but it is also for white kiezers, also for brown kiezers. Because the youth have lost all hope in politicians and politics, and we must change that. Then, voter education, this is perhaps the most tricky of them all. Because you need to tell voters what's wrong, and you must imply who caused it so that they don't vote for the guys again. That, that comes out here. Uh, the other thing is key for deal now. The burgerlijke samenlevings organisaties must help sort of stem down. That key is from far off ongeroy word om te gaan stem. Want bij van die partijen zullen die kan doen niet. Zo ik denk is belangrijk. Ons noemen het voter turnout. Die 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 vierde in is is verkiezingsmonitoren in in Tusa. Dat dat is onder bij mensen goed bekomen is dat die aanzien gaan en kan en het bij zanen PF geleerd hoe om een verkiezing te stel. En daar is een hele klomp manier waar we het op hulle kan doen, maar let me share two with you, two sort of blind spots in the system, or possible fault lines. The first is, the morning when the voting stations open, the ballot boxes are brought by a member of SATU, because they are the teachers, and they are also coalition with the ANC, and they bring the ballot boxes, they are sealed, but they already contain 5,000 votes. And no one knows it. Obviously, in the more busy voting places, there will be people from all parties, and they will demand to see it open, but way back in Limpopo, or Kwasik Deep, Kwasik Natal, they won't initially be that people. So, Erwin Schweller of, uh, of the Cape said that we must have perspex voting ballot boxes. So that you can see that there's nothing in there. So that's the one. The second one possibility is where those votes that have been counted are then fed into the system. Now I'm told that most of the political parties 
at least in the urban areas, will know because they know their people are there, they know how many of them voted, so they check that. But it's not possible for all the parties to have that. So there is a following problem. We have to do that with enough burgerly samenlevings organizations to be by every kies per day. We have to do that with 23.000 kies per day. 23.000 kies per day. Now, that must be a very rich organization be that enough monitors can have by 23.000. Now, that's not so easy. I don't know that Denk dan om 10.000 uh, moniteerders aan te stel vir een week. Maar 10.000 is net, is minder as die helft is wat ons moet rik. So, daarom moet die burgerlijke organisatie saamstaan om te sorg, so dat die die goed gedoen gaan word. En dan die, 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 die laaste ta- saak is nie een saak wat nou aandag kan kry, maar ek denk die burgerlijke samenleving moet ook vir die politieke partijen sê, oor beleid is dit en dit en dit wat ons wil heen. Um, en dit sal waarschijnlijk na die verkiesing moet kies. So, uh, my, my, my uitgangspunt is dat die burgerlijke samenleving het een groter rol om te speel in die verkiesing as enige vorige verkiesing wat ons gehad in Zuid-Afrika. Misschien net vinnig een paar groot burgerlijke samenlevingsorganisaties en initiatieve. Um, daar, is, daar is ses wat al daar is. Uh, die Social Justice Assembly um, Dit is nie organisatie, dit is meer een eenmalige bijeenkomst. Dan is daar die National Youth Coalition. Jullie sal onthou van jylle, they walk to the union buildings on, this, on youth day. And I remember, Jerry was a young guy, uh, and he was quite, quite impressive, and then he said the following, he said, uh, two years ago we demanded certain things from the government, and we're here today to see what they've done. But it was clear that what they demanded, the government has not listened to that. So he said the following, he said, and now we'll give them until 2027 to create the other months. Now it's just by the way that they need to realize they're going to stem me. Uh, and they will not be able to stem me, but they need to do more than that. Then the Unmute campaign, which for himself speaks, My Vote Counts, and the Unmute campaign, which for himself speaks, My Vote Counts, and the Unmute campaign, and other organizations in the West Cup, and the Unmute campaign, and the Unmute campaign, and the Unmute campaign, and the Unmute in the Fena Democracy, what under, meestal under leie van die Ahmed Katrara Foundation is. And it is juist van hulle, what Zongezo Zibi van my gesê het, the problem is that the majority of organizations in the Fena Democracy wants to defend our democracy as long as the ANC stays in power. And hulle het nog nie daar die kon doorgesteek. En dan tos, uh, soos wat van jullie koranten gesien het, so weer en een half gelede, uh, een netwerk gestig, wat ons noem Convergence for SA. Uh, ons is nog in die beginfase, is nog baie vroeg. Maar die gedachte is, dat het een klomp organisaties is, wat die ANC roepe kan oorgesteer het, wat de toekomst kan sien, sonder die ANC, en wat actief wil werk, in daar die gebiede van, van kieseregistratie, kieseropleiding, kieser op, opdaag, en so aan. Um, en, en die, die sekretariaat bestaan uit die ding wat ek begin het in die naam van Network for a New Beginning, the United South African Movement, Movement, Groundwork Collective, Groundwork Collective, van julle sal onthou dat daar was een jong uh, indrukwekkende vrou in Bali en Thule, wat in die KwaZulu Natalse DA was. And she stood against John C. in 2020. And obviously she, she didn't come in and then she resigned not from the DA, but from party politics, and she started an organization called Groundwork Collective. And they're literally working on the ground. And they have, for the last month, registered 7,000 voters every weekend. Now, that's a drop in the ocean, but if we can multiply that, it can, it can make a difference. Uh, then you have Kaapse Forum of, of uh, Andrej Weingart, Rodeo Circle, Center for Public Witness is the Dutch Reformed uh, institution under the management of Bram Anakum. South Africa First, uh, Rod Solomon. And then Operation Watershed is, a, is an organization in Britain uh, that, that wants to make sure that expatriates will, will also vote. So, in dan ons hy jylik tom, dis nou die sekretariaat, and then we've got a lot of organizations. Uh, we have Grijskrag, Karel, uh, have, they've joined Solidarity OTA, Indigenous Language Access Forum, Afrikaans Language Council, Western Cape Council of Churches, NEASA, 
of Gerard Papenfus, and then also Solidarity and the Solidarity Trade Union. So it's a it's a broad range of organizations working together. And and what I what I find very encouraging, two things. Personally, I've been very worried that that especially the young black people will not accept me as an old white male. And there's nothing of that. There's an acceptance, we work together, there's respect. So that's the first encouraging thing. It seems that these people outside the ANC are not part of the, of the racial thinking. And then the other one is that organizations like the Africana Bond and Solidarity are accepted by the other organizations. No one says, no, but you right me or you so. We just say, do you agree with what we want to do? Yes, let's go. And, and that gives me hope. That, that really gives me hope. So that's that's still the side. So let's come to the uh, scenarios. My, my track point of specific scenarios is that Cyril shall not still be leader of the ANC in 2024. There was a that his position is a wobbly is and that he will go and Paul Masatile, uh, president, make for him. It's not going for two reasons. The one is, I think, Paul Masatili had a strong enough steen basis in the ANC. But for two reasons, the Cyril was not always more popular as the ANC. He said, as he will fire for the verkiezing, he will under 40% fall for sure. He will under 35% fall. So he will not do it. Masatili is well a factor in the background. And of course, Magashule, as friend Ais, had his own party begin Hij gaat het ook niet zo bij zeer maken in de vrije staat, maar hij gaat niet rechten. Nationaal is het niet. The second one is that the ANC support base will become more and more rural. As happened with Zanu Pief in, 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 uh, in uh, Zimbabwe. And that the stay away votes by historical ANC supporters will remain. Uh, the majority of them, I don't believe, will vote even for Rise Mazanz. Uh, they will just, like my parents say, uh, just won't go back. Won't, won't the EFF will remain opportunistic, as they are. Um, and, and I think all is bang to have 90,000 people in the, in the stadium in the car market, but 90,000 people is two seats in the parliament. It will be a lot of fun to be able to register and so forth. Then the the Defio Party Verdrag uh, bring the majority of what I call centrum parties. It's more a European word, but in, in our land, to talk about conservative or of gematig, not the old time, so to talk about centrum parties under one umbrella. And in all, it can between 32 and 35 percent carry. Because it is good to get voters by the stemmers to carry, to to let it let stand. Um, Build One SA, Rise with Zanzi and Patriotic Alliance is also part of the center, but it's not part of the full party of the And I think it can a minimum of 5% be. It's easy to say, precisely what we're going to do better. I have the feeling that Rise with Zanzi is going to be the best. Uh, so I think now 1,000 organizers are going to be focused on the Tompi provinces. I'm not going to go too far. But the point that I make here is that it is possible that under good circumstances that the centrum party can be 40 percent as amper a minimum. It's an outcome. And I think that the three, not the verkiezing as the cinema, uh, lost, that they are still in alliance, coalition, so be met the four party verdrags um, En natuurlijk die andere ding uit gaan spinnen is dat die the unregistered youth uh, and and the youth vote will be will be basically determining the outcome of the election. If you think that the, at our last election, I think Anton 16, 17 million votes, there about less than 20, and there are 15 million unregistered voters. If a party or parties could get five million of those votes and get them to vote, not for the ANC but for them, wherever they are, you've got 25% of the outcome. If everyone else goes away, so it, it is real. It is a, it's not a real. Um, good. So what are scenarios? I can see scenarios. Um, 
en allemaal, al die scenario's wat we doen, moet we die ANC gaan vat. En dit is die bepaalde factor. En so die eerste scenario is dat die ANC het, ek denk in elke scenario wat ek gee, die ANC het minder as 50%. Ek denk die ANC gaan meer as 50% krijg. Uh, as hy meer as 50% krijg, dan verander niks en dan hang ek in af hoe die oppositiepartij hulle op hulle steen deel. So, if the ANC gets less than 50, but more than 47, then they can, at national level, have a coalition with the, what I call the rats and mice in parliament. The UDM, Al Jama, Good, you know, all those small parties, they, they're about 2.5% at the moment. They won't go anywhere, they'll be there. So, nothing will change, but the, the after on the pad gaan on, if the ANC. Provinciale vlak, is baie belang, as die ANC minder as 50% krijg, is alle aanduidings, dat hulle gaan ten en kwas in taal van verloor. Uh, en, die, en die rede is dat, omdat die ANC sy, sy, sy steen, meestal in die platland kom, waar hulle betekend 70% krijg. Dit beteken om dan by 48 te kom, moet hulle onder 40% krijg om tot in die stedelike provincies, vooral Gauteng, Pradies en Weeskap, Gauteng en, en Kos en Natal. En dit sal beteken dat, as dit so gebeur, dan verloor, dan is in die drie sterkste ekonomische provincies in die land, is die ANC nie om bevind. En dit kan my maand volg nie gebeur. Dit is nie een wensdenker, he. dit kan gebeur. Um, en, en dit, denk ek, is een goeie ding, want, want dit sal die, die randsel som versterk. Want wat kan nou gebeur? Eerstelijk kan een coalitie die twee provincies gaan tegen kwa zo'n tal regeer en kan dit baie beter bestuur word en kan hulle ook investeer in belegging kry. Wat sal dit? So dit is die, die eerste scenario. Die tweede scenario is dat die ANC kry minder as 45%, maar meer as 40%, sê nie maar 42%. En dit is baie moeilijk. Nie maar weet nie, maar is baie moeilijk. Nationaal beteken dit dat hulle sal kyk na twee moeilijke partijen, die IVP. Nou die IVP staan op die oomlik op 3,5-4% in die parlement. Hulle doen baie goed in, in Kozul Natal, hulle klap die ANC links en rechts, die visies nie in die, die verkiesings. Uh, ek meen hulle kan na 6-7% toe stuig, wat hulle dis een moeilijkheid maak vir die coalitie met die ANC, en wat die ANC sal doen, hulle sal waarschijnlijk vir die IGP sê, uh, come in, uh, we will give you the premium president of the hotel, and we will give you the deputy president. And we will give him all kinds of difficult tasks, so that he can't bother. They won't tell him that. The, the EFF, everyone is worried about the coalition with the EFF. Uh, so, I... I'm of, the, of a different view. I don't think that the ANC and the EFF will, under the leadership of Sir Ramaphosa, ever make a coalition again with the EFF. There are people like Le Sufi and Mashitili who want to do it, but I'm told that at the ANC's uh, NEC meeting last weekend, they specifically said they will not enter into a coalition with the EFF. I also think it won't be workable. And if you are an Armageddon type of theorist, you will say, well, then that's the end of the country. But we are not that kind of country. All, let's say the unthinkable happens, and the ANC and the EFF announce ANC got 42%, the EFF got 8.5%. They form a coalition, they will govern. It will just hasten the downfall of both parties. Because remember, then Gauteng and Kozinatal are not in their hands anyway. Because the EFF won't get that type of support in, in Kozo Natal, for instance. So, but if it has to happen, let's face it, then it's better to get rid of the ANC in 2026 in the metros and 2029. But don't say you can manage the ANC like the DA says, it'll be their downfall too. So, op, op nationale vlak is die coalitie moeilijk en dan op provinciaal verloor die ANC hulle meer uit die Gauteng, of hulle met die IVP om die wind sal blij hangen af van die verkiesing, maar dan sal hulle in Kwazulu Natal een coalitie vorm met die, met die IVP. So dis die tweede scenario. Die derde scenario is a, a 3A en a 3B, die ANC krijg minder as 40%. Nou die kansen daarvoor is kraal, maar nie onmoendlik. En as dit gebeur is daar twee moendlikere. Die eerste is wat Helen Zille genoem het, a grand coalition tussen die ANC en die DA. En ek moet sê, ek, ek hoor te veel stories en geruchte, 
dat die DA aan die ene kant dier John Steenhuisen by die veelpartij verdrag praat oor coalities met die andere partijen, maar dat hylle zullen in andere ouders in, in die DA met die ANC praat, met Makura en met Machetile oor wat sal ons kan doen om een coalitie met julle te vorm. Nou ek dink dis, ek, ek ken vir julle een bykie van, toe to ek is daar voorgeef as gepoot, wat sy raam by my verslaggever, ons mekaar so bykie in die politiek, sy is een slim vrou, ek kan nie verstaan wat sy dink, sy kan die ANC bestuur nie. Ek, kan, ek verstaan het. Uh, so ek weet nie of het malicious rumors is nie, or whether it's, it's clear, but anyway, so that, that is a possibility, a grand coalition with the DA. If, however, they get around 35%, where 21-22% of the DA won't give them 53%, or will, will just barely give them 50%, the, the present opposition parties, including the, the DA, could form a majority government. Then they could get 42-43% more than anyone else, and more than the, the, the um, ANC and the EFF would get. Now, to form a majority government is a very difficult thing. It's happened in some local authorities, it means you've got 45% and you can govern because you're the biggest group. But if you need to pass a budget or certain specific things, you need the support of parties outside your coalition. So it'll be messy, but it's possible. Pro- provincially, Sali ANC and the DA down Sam Regier and Gauteng in Kozum in the town. As a land in the town. So as a IVP down Eitgoy. And as a 3B is, uh, as daar een meerderheidsregering uh, gevorm word, sal die oppositiekoalitie regeer in beide Gauteng en Kozulu Natal. En ek sal nou nou sê, hoekom is dit belangrijk wat op die provincies in vraag gebeur. Die vierde scenario is een scenario wat ek nou maar die afgelopen maand optel. En dit is dat uh, ons president in sy beeld ook van homself en van ander as die groot kompromis soeker, dit kan oorweeg om, wanneer die ANC onder 45% val, met ander woorde, wanneer hulle nie meer die reeds en mys in die parlement kan recht kom nie, dat hy regering van nationale eenheid gaan aankondig. En dat hy al die partijen boek aan 2%, wat boek aan 2% is, sal nooi om te kom deel, en het klink een baie romantische idee, het vat ons terug na 94 toe, maar wat het met 94 gebeur, Dat is naar partij het uitgeloop, want het, die ANC het onmoendlik gemaakt met die saam te werk. Um, en ek denk, dit sal is een meesterskui wees van Cyril, want wie sal kan nie sê? Hy word genooi en Cyril sê, maar we must, we must save the country together, better, blah, I like it. And what will happen? The ANC will just still do what, they, what they're doing. Now I'm told that the DA people who, who say that they want to make a, have a coalition with the ANC say, but we will have very strict uh, ACER, we, you know, we have demands. Demands have never helped work with the ANC. And, and so I, I believe that this is a possibility, but then South Africa put the foot. Uh, and, and it won't hold. It just won't hold. Uh, provincially then, the ANC would, would govern alone in six provinces, the DA would govern the Western Cape, and Gauteng and KZN would have governments of provincial unity, not governments of national unity. Okay. So those are the four scenarios. Now I wanted to just press it through. As dit gebeur in 2024, wat gaan gebeur in 2026? Want binnen twee jaar na volgende jaar verkiesing, het ons weer een plaaslike overheidsverkiesing. Nou, ek sê hier in enige scenario waar die ANC een meerderheid of een nood bly, sal regering en dienstlevering nog zwakker word. En dit gaan uiteindelijk opvang met die aansien, soos we dit nou in 2024 bedag na opvang, gaan nog erger opvang in 2026. So in scenario 1, klein partij, 2 IVP, 3A, die DA, en 4, die regering van nationale eenheid, sal die landsbestuur zwakker word, verdeeldheid en verval in die ANC sal toeneem, ekonomie en dienstlevering gaan verder af de rand gaan, Die ANC gaan hulle coalitie vernote aftrek en kiesers gaan daar vernote straf in 2026. Um, in, die, in die regering van nationale eenheid gaan het bijna onmoendlik wees as gevolg van beleidsverskille. Ek wil kan julle dink dat die ANC open om alles te doen wat hy vandag doen om kiesers te wen, net om die DA of die Vrijheidsfront of X en SA in die, in die kabinet sê. Hulle gaan nie open. 
Want hulle dink, miskien in 2026 gaan hulle beter doen, en in 2029 gaan hulle nog 60% krijg. So hulle gaan nie ophoud aan, en dit gaan het onmoendlik maak. En daarom, van wie hierdie redes, I say that the ANC will in 2026 um, lose decisively in all the metros. Also because, remember, for the last two years before 2026, the probability of a, of a opposition coalition governing both Gauteng and Kosovo-Tel is very real. Okay? So the ANC loses decisively in all the metros, Joe Botswana, Ekruleni, Nelson Mandela, Durban, and sells dark man by whom. I can't even believe that the first time is good, but for me, that can be. All is the free state, not a provincy that is easy to the opposition to go. So this is what 2026 happens. 2029. In scenarios 1, Klein Partij, 2, FVP, 3A, and Sally Ains is a static undergang for the deal. The ANC is going to be in the time between 2026 and 2029 bijna alle stedelijke steen verloor. Hy gaan een zanopie en wat. Uh, en as hy onder 35 val, wat ek denk kan gebeur, dan het hy meer as een gematigde partij nodig om om, om, om oor, die, oor die streep te kry. En die, 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 die veel partijverdrag en andere oppositiepartijen kan dan makkelijk meer as 50% krijgen. Want as die ANC 35 krijg en die EVP, ach die EFF krijg, Tien, as het 45, dan krijg die ander per definitie 55. In, sari, in scenario 3B, waar die oppositiepartij een nederig sê geer vorm, as hulle kan vastbid en deerdruk, dan kan hulle met diezelfde logica in 2029, 51% krijg. In scenario 4, dit is die regering van nationaal eenheid, I say this will crumble before 2029, because of the ANC's incapacity, achter bakse, I don't know what's that in English, um, but it's, it's a mixture of sharing stupidity and dishonesty uh, and corruption. And I do think if one thinks about that possibility, let's say there's a government of national unity and they struggle and they try to go and they can't get anywhere. Some of them will then say, but we need something different here. And, and I think there is a possibility in that time that a new centra, centrist party could emerge. I think there are only two parties that would probably not join that new party, uh, and that would be the Freedom Front Plus, because it has a, basically an ethnic base, and the, and the IFP, that also has an ethnic base. But the others may come in, but those two parties may come in as coalition partners. So we mustn't, we mustn't miss, uh, uh, miss the possibility that in this boiling pot of a government of national unity or coalition, there may be a leader or leaders coming forward and saying, let's start a new party and go into 2029. That's a possibility. And last point, the party that in the regering of national unity was, and not clearly in the state of corruption, because they know this is what they're going to get. They're going to get an ANC regering and step. They're going to get a leader of the government. They're going to get a cabinet post. They're going to get a young post. If they don't do anything, they're going to get the choice by the stem of the straf. In 2029. Right, I'm almost done. Um, I say this, there's many people who say, we uh, that the ANC is not going to lose in 2024. Because they are not going to lose, 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 they are not going to Maar ek denk nie dat gaan gebeur nie. Ek denk ons het drie fase oorgang. Die, die eerste fase van die oorgang is die ANC verloor gaf tegen het was in een tal volgende. Die tweede fase van die oorgang is hulle verloor alle metros beslissing. En die derde is hulle verloor die nationale regering, maar hulle regeer nog in een paar platlandse provincies. Ek kan nie sien Lapopo of Vrystaat of Mpomalanga of Noordwest die ANC vinnig hulle meerderede in die landelijke provincies gaan verloor. So, in die sekere sin is nie as by ANC met een slag uitgegooi word, wat ons nie moet ons opstaan. Dit gaan een, ek, ek, ek ben dit is die dopperse nacht om ons formuleer, wat praat van een gestarigde dood. Ek nie, dit kan nie al nog duidelijk, maar dit is een gestarigde dood vir die ANC, wat eindelijk goed is vir die land, maar die oorgang is dan bykie meer met gedrag as wat het precies af, 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 afgekap word. Ehm, um, 
tweede laatste schrijf je die, wat is dan die rol van die burgerlijke samenleving? En dit is jelle, en ek. Die eerste is, dit is nie om stemmen voor een specifieke partij of coalitie te werken. natuurlijk, jelle is leren van partij as jylle is, en dan moet jylle natuurlijk aan leren werk, maar ek praat van organisaties en, en, en gewone mense. Maar, ek denk, ons moet sê, ons is oor die aansere bekom. Ons kan ons self indink dat daar een regering kan wees waar die ANC nie die rol speel wat hulle speel. So ons moet die ANC die kan oorsteek symbolies, but we must also as civil society keep other parties, and also this coalition, accountable. I mean, one of the things I have in mind for, for conversions for ESA is that if the, the multi-party charter don't get their the behinds in order, that's not a good but in Afrikaans is hulle met hulle gat en rat kry. Then we must have the power as a civil society organization to go to them and say, guys, you must get this right. You can't let petty politics at local level jeopardize the big coalition you have. And, and they will, at least they'll have to hear us. I don't know whether they will listen. So it's not just the ANC, it's also the opposition. And there are 10 tenfold organizations who want to do this, but very little coordination, that's what we try to do. And I've spoken about this. Let me just say something about minorities. Minderhede, wat ek iets eerst sê oor die census, jy het seker iemand, ek het vir Connie Mulder gehoor, vir ochend of gister ochend, oor die ondertelling. Uh, ondertelling is een aanvaardbaar ding as het 5% is. In Amerika was een nou groot herrie, omdat die African American population was 3% ondergetel. So wat hulle doen, die, die, die uh, um, uh, census ouders, hulle gaan en vraag vir mense, is jy getel? En dan doen hulle projectie. En die projectie is dat 65% van wit mense, um, 71% van Indiërs, en ek denk 36% van bruin mense is nie getel nie. So ons gaan wonder dat die getal is so afgezien. Nou ek, ek aanvaar ons getal word minder, want ons geboortekoers is laar, en ons, daar is nog een klomp ons het emigreer. Maar dit is net nie, dit is nie geloofbaar nie. Maar, al is dit waar, is, in, in, in die oud stelsel was ons 8 wit, 8% wit, 8%, ach sies, 9% wit, 9% uh, uh, bruin, en 2% indie. So ons was 20% van die bevolking. Oké? Okay? Kom ons sê, ons het nou geval na 17%. Omdat ons ouwer is, en die minderhede behalwe miskien die brein bevolking, is meer van ons stem gerechtig, en is meer van ons geregistreer. As allemaal van ons minderhede gaan stem, vir een TNA&C, dan is daar 23% reeds in die sakkie. En, en ek sê dit vanavond specifiek, moet nie dat mense vir julle sê, ach, ek, ek, nie, ek sê lust nie, dit gaan nie verander nie. Hierdie verkiesing is die verkiesing waar jou stem en my stem, as een minderheidslid van een minderheidsgoed, kan verskil maak. Uh, en ons, ons het hulle allemaal nodig, en ek gee nie om vir julle stem nie. Daar sê twee partij vir julle nie moet stem nie. En hulle is vroeg in die alfabet. Right. So, en, en kan een vriend sê, en stel word ek het deze aard praat. So my laaste skyf is so van een dat jy nie moet loos en weggaan nie. So die slechte nies op die oomlik is die gebeure om die ANC bring grote politieke onstabiliteit. Want hulle doen snaakse dinge. Maar hulle doen ook snaakse dinge. Hulle doen humoristische goeders. Weet dat, dat Cyril kan sê ernstig vir die journalist die feit dat daar nie een stadsbeplanner in pampier stad is nie, is apartis is. Weet ek wil dit snaaks, dit is eindelijk snaaks. Okay. Uh, as mens dit net mooi raak sê. Um, wat het een ander vrou gesê? Uh, die feit dat hy mense in die gebouw in Johannesburg doorgebrand het, is een partij te skil, want hy het nie vir hulle goed genoeg bouw gebouw en gebouw 30 jaar geleden. Wat het in 30 jaar gebeur? Weet jy, uh, so ons gaan baie humor he, we gaan to have a lot of fun and that. But the good news is that I believe that we will be rid of the ANC and its racial ideology between one and six years. There is a small possibility that there's a black swan event. Uh, those of you who are financial people who know what the black swan event is. It's something that you've, you've not seen. It happens every hundred years. It is possible that the ANC could lose 
and fall to 35% in the best change. I don't believe that. I don't think. I think that the historic support for the ANC is still too strong. But the point is, if we don't get rid of them next year, we'll get rid of them in 2029. Uh, and we may get rid of them in Gauteng, our province, in 2024. The EFF or X, any other party, in every country there's a radical left. In, in a few countries, Europe, there's also a radical right. Uh, we don't really have a radical right, it, you know, unless you think Steve Hoffman uh, may be sort of on that side. But they will always be with us, but international experience has shown that they never get over 15%. Now, obviously, in, in our situation, that could be a lot, but I don't believe they will get 15%. Um, so, uh, let's just accept them. The other point of caution is as my realistic is, and as you can who circled the DIA alliance in Pretoria, coalition in Pretoria, met the ANC ambtenaren om het om te draaien. En moet ons aanvaar self ook kry ons die nieuwe regering in 2029 gaan hulle tussen 5 en 10 jaar vat om die staatsies recht te rik. En ek wil julle nie moedeloos maak nie, maar ek sal my, my plig versaak as dit nie daarop wees. Dit, dit gaan nie makkelijk wees nie, dit gaan symbolies wees, dit gaan begin, maar dit gaan nie makkelijk wees. Maar, maar ek glo, ons is by die draaipunt, die ekonome praat beteken van een V-vorm van herstel, beteken die, die ekonomie val baie vinnig, en hy tel baie vinnig op, of een U, as ook een weer. Maar U beteken, jy val, en as lang so, en nou draai, en ek denk ons is nou by die, die draai, want we are on the upward curve. So, what I'm saying is, I try to keep balance, uh, sien die ander kant van die saak, dit help nie jy vloek vir Julius nie, jy moet verstaan, jy moet Julius verstaan, want, want dan weet jy, wat, wat is die vijand. Tijdsbesef, Ons sikkel nou 30 jaar met die ANC, maar ek sê altyd, my kinders, sy kinders, my kleinkinders, sy kinders, gaan in 2080 om die kant vir sit en sê, ja, ons is dan een wonderlijke land. Ja, daar was daar in die 20er jare, oom die van Z, waarom jy begin in die Z, hy het bykie moeilijkheid gemaakt, maar jy van daar het net voor om te gaan. Ek geloof 30 jaar is niks in die landse geschiedenis. Nou weet ek vir die van ons dat bykie grijs raak, hoe sal hy sê in Engels, it's small consolation. So, ons sal ook net die beloofde land van ver af sien, maar hierdie jong mense sal om in, in hom ingaan. Humor, sense of humor, is very important to help us cope, the psychologists tell us. So, don't stop laughing, steer your whatsapps on with the grappies. So, realism, sien nie jylle prentje raak, ek kom vir jylle vanavond sê, man, die ANC is uit volgende jaar, is nie realistisch, dit is nie realistisch. Hoop, en ek denk, Ek het vir buis stem oor baie goed saam, en die ening waar ons vir al saam stem, is dat ons as, as leiersgroepe, as, as leiers, en ons is allemaal leiers op die manier, waar die mense die meeste nodig het, is hoop. As mense eers hoop verloor het, dan is het afdraad. So hope is very important, and we can't, have, as Christians, those of us, oh, I don't believe this, we cannot, we cannot say, you know, this is the end, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously, faith, God stays in, 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 in control. Um, I may have done it last time, uh, Niku, but let me close with what Abraham Kuyper. Abraham Kuyper was a great Calvinist theolog, a Hollander. And he had always said, he reads in the morning his Bible to see what God can do. And then he reads his Koran to see how God can do. <laughs> Nou ek wil nou nie sê beeld het een directe lijn na die liewe vader toe nie, maar as mens die korante oor die algemeen lees en jy hou bykie perspektief, dan moet mens sien daar, daar is een plan, is vir ons altyd duidelik. So baie sterkte, um, in, in die laaste ene het, jy, het van julle ook al gesien, dis die preenkie wat ek noem perspektief, dis een preenkie, en, maar dit het twee vrouwe, as jy, jy sien of een ouwer vrou, Ek sê ouwer, want ek is met die ouwer vrou getrek. Of jy sien die jong vrou. Wie, wie sien die ouwer vrou? Ok, wie sien die jong vrou? Wie sien albei? Ja, sien. So, in die punt wat ek hier maak, is dat jy die ochend by jou huis of jou woonsel of jou kosteskamer uitreid. It's one reality. It's not two realities. It's not a virtual reality. Maar dan, hoe kyk jy dan? 
Jy kan daarna kyk en net daar bemoer dan nie sien. Of jy kan sien, maar jy is een jong meisie wat in die vleer van haar leven is. En ek hoop jylle kan altyd die jong vrou raak sien. Dank jy. Baie dankie, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's all about perspective, the what, but also the how of, of perspective, how we see things, but always the what. Time for a few questions. We will have a question, so we will ask you, say to me, will you have a question for me? We will open it up and then you will ask me. So we will start with the question. Yes, I will ask you, Ons het nou gepraat van het 29. Gaan ons landse economie so lang kan uithou? Nog een vraag? So. Right, uh, great presentation. Really do appreciate that. Uh, two quick questions on my end. Uh, so the first is you spoke about cater deployment um, as detrimental to the ANC as a whole and went on to describe kind of the systemic elements behind uh, the current downfall. Uh, to what extent do you think uh, the systemic component of understanding the current political dynamic will have an effect moving forward? Uh, can the current system be changed? Does it require systemic change? If you can kind of speak to that a bit. Uh, the second question, as you mentioned, there are ideological differences, um, but the problem is that the interests themselves are uh, what are different. So do you believe that um, it will be more the ideological differences or the interests of all of the parties involved that will play a role uh, regarding whether or not there can be kind of a coalition grant or non-grant in this regard? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yerov. Um, just a short question, but uh, a lot of people talk about that. What, what do you think is the influence of the Zuma faction still in the country's politics? Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Andre, Andre Fisser. So my question is, what can you, I, what's going to happen? How can we mobilize the youth to get again, awakened by politics and get them involved again. Nog een vraag, Jesom? Ek wil nie vraag, is jy nie bewust van die beweging Time to Rise, wat reeds een baie groot youth beweging aan die gang het, om jy sy jeug te mobiliseer? Nog een vraag? Teels, baie dankie vir die uitstekende analyse van die situasie. Ek wil voorstel ons stig sommer vanavond een nieuwe partij die die filosofie partij van Zuid-Afrika en jy en Nico van der Dussen werk vir ons die toekomst uit en ons gaan voorhoud. Baie dank, ek het is genoeg vraag. Moet oor die laaste vraag moet ek sê, as jy dit voorstel dan onderskat jy my ambitie. Ons het genoeg politieke partij, ons moet hulle net ons een rechte ons afboek. Sal die ekonomie hou? Ek sê ja. En die rede is, ekonomie is nooit wat die Engelse noem is zero sum game. As ons denk as uit Afrika wat die werkloos is, koos nou oor die afhangende wat die definitie met die meeste 40% is, dan het die informele ekonomie het gegroei. En dit hou een soort van een balans. Ek dink dis nie dat dit, weet dat my sê, ons kan nie nog vijf jaar hiervan vat nie. Ons het nou van die kese, as ons kyk na al die opties nie. Maar ek dink wat mense gaan doen, is om meer self te doen. En dat bezighede ten spuite van al die regulaties, en ten spuite van al die nonsens, gaan blijf vasse. Ek dink, Ek dink klein bezighede gaan sikkel, want as die koopkracht nie daar is nie, vir alle bezighede wat goed vervaardig wat mense moet gebruik en om eet, as daar nie koopkracht is nie, dan is die probleem. Maar ek dink die ANC's sociale toela gaan nie weggaan. En die story wat hulle vertel, dat jy moet nie vir die oppositie stem nie, wat hulle gaan jou toela kom wegvat. Geen oppositie partij sal die toela kom wegvat. Dat is nie een moendelikheid nie.
en nie net politisch nie, dit gaan een katastrofe wees. Ek denk wat mens behoort het, dit is oor tyd vir mens en minder afhankelijk te maak van die, so, van die sociale media. So, ek, ek denk die economie gaan seer kry, maar ek denk ook dat die economie is, wat is die woord, resilient, veerkrachtig genoeg om, om dit te doen. En, en, en let us just remember, if, I, if for instance, as I think could, could happen, Gauteng and, and uh, KwaZulu-Natal go to the opposition, you will see investments streaming into those two provinces that you can't believe. It will be more than what Cyril in his five investment conference could, could get together and it will be real investment because people will say, here's a new government, we think we can make money, let's go. So I, I think this might be quarter mind that this can help. And of course, the same thing will happen as the cities in 2026 and uh, to the opposition. Uh, dan gaan mense sê, maar hier is een stad wat kan groei. So, I, I'm not too worried. Uh, David, uh, a change in Kaida deployment. Um, look, it's clear that the ANC with their reaction also to the DA's um, uh, court case and so on, do not want to change Kaida deployment. I mean, it's their way to keep people loyal. You know. Now, Kaida deployment is not something only that you can find in South Africa with the ANC. It's all over the world. It's not always known as Kaida deployment, but the point is it's, it's most of the time it's to deploy someone that you trust with skills in the job. What happened in South Africa, it wasn't with skills. It was how much money can this guy make for me or how well does he know Zuma or whatever. You know, that was where the point came. I mean, in, in, in America, they changed the civil service, at the top level at least, if the Republicans should, should come in. Uh, so that's not the problem. The problem is that this was linked to racial transformation, to appoint people in, on the basis of race, and secondly, there was corruption, or there is corruption. So I don't think the ANC will change, um, and I think if they, there is a, a coalition with the ANC and all this government of national unity, if I were in that government, I would say let's start there. The second point is the, whether the government of national unity will, will uh, work on ideology or interest. Now, let me say what I think. I think Cyril is a charming man, and he will make, uh, when he announces this, if he does, obviously, he will say he calls on all political leaders of good faith to join him and let's get the country up, as it were, and let's make us proud again of South Africa and Tuma Mina, you know, kind of, you know, you know what I'd say. Okay, then they'll come. And he'll then ask, but please, can we rise above our ideological positions? And everyone will say yes. So he said, what are our common interests? And when we start saying what are our common interests, the ideology will come in. I, I don't believe that seven or eight parties or five parties forming part of a na- government of national unity will say, well, we don't mind that there's KD deployment, you know. Uh, or, you know, we like black economic empowerment very much, the way it's, it's done, uh, or whatever. I just think that, that they will say we will work in the interest of the country, but those two are, are so, so intertwined. And then the other problem that Cyril has is that the majority of his party, and that's what I said, is not there for, for their ideology, they there for their self-interest. And so, you know, it won't align with, other, with the other people's interest if they say we're in the national interest. The Zuma Foxy, uh, act, act then, it's a spent force. I hear rumors and I read now that someone can, you know, from his of his son or his daughter or whatever, can go to a new party and so on. Ik denk die feit dat die IVP zo so goed doen kwas in Natal is een bewijs dat die ANC het uit mekaar het geval insluitend in die Zuma fractie en dat, dat het, hulle gaan nie daarbij uitkom. En, en, en daar val nou politieke partij te stig 7 maanden voor die verkiesing van die werk. So ek, ek denk as voorbij daar mag het ook nie onder duimsheid wees. Uh, ek denk as IJsmakker Schule, as IJsmakker Schule in die vrystaat sal beter doen as die Zuma partij wat begin kwas in Natal. Um, the youth, how do we mobilize the youth? Now, let, let me say that some of the organizations in, in, in our Convergence for SA, like Mbali and Tuli, 
uh, and a few others, uh, my vote counts and so on, have very interesting ideas of how to mobilize the youth and get them to register but also vote. Before, I'll say, and the other thing I've always said, the SABC has a special message to you, and you pay your television license, it's the right thing to do. Now, my generation, and your generation, the, the, the baby boomers, and before as the silent generation, for them that's exactly the right thing. Do the right thing. Young people don't listen to that. The X and the Y generation, the Z generation, they ask, what's in it for me? How can I be mobilized? I'm not saying they're wrong about that, I'm just saying that's, that's it's proven. So what, we, what they are doing and what we are thinking of is to incentivize you registering. An example, we get X million rand of money, we get the four best DJs in the country, and we say in the Soweto Stadium there will be a big bash. Kentucky Fried Chicken has sponsored the chicken wings, Coke has sponsored the Coke, and if you're over 18, this uh, SAB will give you a beer for free. The only thing we ask is to gain access to that stadium on that day. Bring us a proof of your voter registration certificate. Now, I, when I heard this, I thought this is brilliant. Obviously, it'll have to be tested, but that's, those are the things we're looking at. Mbali and Tudi, for instance, said that from the people they are registering, they've decided to choose a thousand of them to go and, on behalf of Groundwork Collective, be monitors on the election in different stations. Now, that's a huge thing for a young person to say, I'm going to be involved. So, I, I, don't, I can't speak exhaustively about it, but these are the kind of things we're doing to make sure that that young people do understand that they should register, that they should vote. And to my surprise, when I spoke to Mbali Tuli, now Mbali Tuli, Anton is about 35. I know she's got kids of three and one, so she's, she's, about, she's younger than my daughters. Um, and when I spoke to her and a, and a colleague of her, and I said, but we also want to do voter education because we want to tell people in a way what is wrong and who's responsible. And Sife Sitle said, you're wasting your, your money and your time. We know exactly who's, who's responsible and we will never vote for them. So there, there is a, a segment of the black youth who you don't need to tell them to vote for. I know some people think, well, if you register voters, oh, let, what if they vote for Julius? Yes, there will be some who will vote for Julius, but the majority, I'm a firm believer in, will not, will not vote for, for Julius. Time to rise. Yes, I've, uh, I know we know about time to rise. Um, they just haven't been public in, in a way that uh, they've been under the radar because they, they, they to do with leaders and individuals. Um, once they form a, a you know, party or another party, an organization that one can adapt, we can do it. I, I know uh, Dirk Hanukum uh, very well. He's actually invited me to that. My only thing, and I don't want to um, to uh, insult anyone here. The, the, the problem with, with people sometimes who are part of the churches and part of, of such organizations, they want the vot voting campaign to be a moral regeneration movement. And I say, yes, moral regeneration is important, but we must first get rid of the ANC, then we can talk about moral regeneration. And, and, and so I'm, I'm not sure yet that, that time to rise won't be just people giving witness about how their lives have changed and they're going to do good. I want to know whether they will vote and get others to vote for the, for the right parties. But we will keep in contact with them. And in the new party, I think I spoke about it. Why don't you offer a glass? Barad Beekman, right here from Beeld, that I know from the Sam here to save my. Op die einde zei hij s'nachts, en hij zei, waar je dankie dat ik samen met ek sê, waarvan praat jy? Hij sê, nee, dit was lekker om te eet samen met die ouwe, wat die meeste van my leesers sê, met president word, ek sê, waarvan praat jy? Toe is het blijk wat die SMS'e, wat iemand toe skryf, en sê, met een of een president, wat een of een president, die weet daar een. En toe het een ander ouwe, een mooi plat gesit, die sê, 
as teens eel of sy president word, kan hy sy hele kabinet saamstel met die SMS en die briefskrywers van beeld. <laughs> Baie dankie, baie dankie, baie dankie. Ek greeg hier graag oor Nico. Dankie, Willi. Dankie, Teens, wil ek vir jou dankie sê. Het gauw een paar andere bedankings. Willi, vir jou hantering van die verrichtinge, vir die jongmanne wat die technische goed vir ons hanteer, vir Victoria High School Old Boys vir die faciliteite en die kost en die drang tegen billike prijse en onthou asjeblief het om jylle rekening uit te betaal voor jylle loop. Dan, hoekom lach jy? Nee, maar ek, ja, sy het daarom vergeet, laas. So, en dan vir Jan en Adrian van JQ Digital vir die opnames en die foto's en die sociale media component vir Alma en die ARS dankie vir die verteense rooiwein Alma het wil graag nie dit kom oorhandig nie sy sê van die ek het nou vir haar koortspreker gekry en hy wil sê nie dit kom oorhandig nie ek sal soms vir jou geet jas En dan natuurlijk vir jy allemaal wat die so hierdie funksies die moeite waard maak. Dit is maar iets wat ons doen uit net aan die liefde vir die saak. Dit is lekker om mense hier te heen en dit is lekker om sprekers soos jy te heen teens. Ek denk ons het al so 50 van hierdie funksies gedoen. Ons het baie goeie kwaliteit sprekers, maar ek denk jy is maar nog meer al boer rond teens en ons is gelukkig dat allemaal van hulle vir ons wel nie altemaal verniet nie dat hulle vir die bodel wijn kom praat so die baie dankie daarvoor, teens weer eens baie dankie vir jou vir jou opsomming, ek denk ons sal sekerlik ene van die tijd daarvan in die beeld weer lees en van my kant af met twee klein pijnkies en There is never a point of no return en my interaksie met die jeug mense soos David die Makatsa Jandrei, weet daar is die technologie is interessante ding daar is een boek geskryf The future is faster than you think ek denk die opwindende nieuwe Zuid-Afrika, alhoewel zo'n gese sê, dit is een derig jaar projek en dit is waarschijnlijk, maar ek denk Daar is baie interessante goed wat gaan gebeur met nieuwe denke, nieuwe technologische vermoens, want baie goed wat vandag in theorie bestaan, gaan ons tegen baie laakkoste kan begin uitvoer tot voordeel van die meerderheid van die mense. En ek denk, daar, soos mense sê, jy moet president wees, behalve ek sê hier in die gehoor sê te is dit een man wat op sy veer af is van hy president word. So, keir is dit lief, verder lekker saam, praat met teens, ek dink is hy sal sekerlik nog interaktie